Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. We've got a Hawthorne here. What can I do with that? This is a collected tree and I've not done anything to it, but this branch was very close to this main trunk. So what I did is I applied a wire and this is just there to spread these two apart. Hopefully that won't spring back. That should be kind of set in place now. Yeah, it is. It's not moving at all which is what I wanted. The base of this tree is quite interesting. It sits its widest from this sort of view and it really flares out nicely. Looks quite good. We've got a sucker there that I've absolutely no need for, so that can come off. We've also got a low branch here, but I'll leave that for the time being. But if we look at the tree, there's potentially something down here Maybe as a, a sort of mother and daughter planting, but I think they both need cutting off, something like there. I could make that chop and cut these down and just allow them to grow in the spring, and they would because it's a good healthy tree. However, that will be a waste of what's happening up here. And what I see is the potential for a really nice broom style hawthorn. This is very straight, very boring. But I quite like that, the fact that this is so straight, so cylindrical, it's got this lovely white bark, and if I could get some roots coming out from, say, here, it could be a nice tree. While I'm working on this tree, I don't want these other sections to be in the way, so I'm just going to remove them. It's just the simplest way. These will sprout back in the spring. Oh, there's a piece of wire on there. I've forgotten about that. That was to separate this branch, but... It's not necessary now and even this one up here I'll cut that back and I'm just I've got clear access now to the top of the tree apart from all the branches that have grown from up at the top here which is where I made the initial cut when I collected the tree we've got one other branch and I think this could be useful as a support for the air layer so I won't remove it but I will cut it back Now I can start looking at the business end up here. And as I rotate this tree, I've tried to put this in the center of the frame. It looks quite good from most angles, but I'm tending to think that from here, it kind of looks the best. My first job is to remove any branches that I don't want. There's two growing from the exact same part here. So I'll take that one off. And it's now just about deciding which ones to keep and which ones to remove. I've got the same scenario around this other side. We've got a tiny branch down here that can go first of all. I know I don't want that. We've got these branches and this is coming from the same place as this. But this major branch I want to try and keep. So I'll get rid of that one. Then round on this side, we've just got one more competing branch in the middle. Let's take that off. And we're done then with all the simple cuts. These were the easy decisions to make. Presuming that we're looking in at the front of the tree, we've got a really nice, long, strong branch coming right from the center. And I think that's in a really good place. If that's going to be the new leader, then this one here next to it is a bit low. So I think this is one to be removed because I can't keep both of these and I don't want this one to compete. As I look at the front here, we've got two branches, this one and this one, and they're almost parallel with each other. So one of them's got to be removed. This rear branch is coming from a similar point as this thicker branch, which will be kind of a back branch. And I definitely like this one Therefore, out of these two, I think it's best to remove this one that's further back, so that can go. I sometimes have fans come and join me. <laughs> this is my brother Rick. I'm not, I'm not letting him watch the TV because I'm filming, so he's just coming to see a, a bit of a bonsai masterclass while he drinks wine. Eh? What could be better? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> The branches are slowly disappearing one, one by one. And what I've noticed is I do like this branch here. 
and these two are kind of coming from the same similar point as I look from the front here they're kind of emanating from the same place I don't want them all so I need to choose one of these and I think it's best to keep this other one because it's in a different position to this and I've just got to go with my gut sometimes I've got these two branches here that are sort of coming from a similar level. I need to pick one. And in this instance, this is quite a thick branch coming up at a good angle. I like it. And so it's the smaller branch that's going to be removed. That's my initial pruning done. I'm happy with how they look. I think they're all in good natural positions. Next job is to deal with this stump at the top. As I mentioned earlier, this is where I made the cut when I collected the tree, I left a stump. Well, I didn't leave a stump. I just cut it and all of these grew. But now's the time to reduce this down so that you can start healing over. And with this being the front, I'd rather have the kind of cut going backwards from this point. So I'm thinking that if I can cut in here somehow on a downward slope, that'll work really well. But to do that, I'm going to have to move this out of the way with a piece of wire. I'm just putting something temporary up first of all. So this isn't the finished wiring or anything. This is just to get this piece out of the way of the saw. So I'll just quickly coil it like that and that will allow me to just bend this so that it doesn't interfere with the saw as I then make the cut. Now that that wire has been moved out of the way, with a bit of luck, I can come in and create a sort of downward facing cut there. The beauty of a pull saw is that you can just take your time Hold the trunk and you've got really good control as you cut. I've just changed angles now and I'm attacking the cut from the back. So these two cuts are coming down in a bit of a V shape. Looking from the side of the tree now, hopefully these V's have cut right through and I can just pop this off there. Lovely. It's quite a high tree, so I'm stood up on a chair. I'm really happy with how that went there. I've got my cutters, but truth be told, I think this has formed a really clean top to the tree. And so I don't feel there's a need to really remove much more material at all if any. Now that that nub's removed and I've got all the branching that I want in place, it's time to add some movement into these branches. So I'm going to wire the tree up. I'm not going to record myself wiring the tree, but I did want to show you this. Very rarely seen on Tony's bonsai. It's fresh wire. <laughs> this is what I'll be using. Now for the most fun bit, I can start putting some movement into these branches and I don't want to do anything crazy. I want to keep it relatively natural, but I do want to add some sort of snaking movement and I want to keep it fairly low down because I'm going to cut these branches back once they've thickened up. Uh, and I, so I want some movement in that early part. So I'm not bothered what happens up at the top. We'll start off with this main apex. At the moment, it's going almost vertically up and I definitely need it to come towards the camera a bit. So I've I'm going to take it towards the camera and away. So I'll start it going towards and away. This wire is only just holding this. In fact, it isn't. I need to put some thicker wire on that piece. I've anchored the wire at the bottom and then whenever I add a second coil, I add it right down the center of the wire. This way it offers maximum support 
to the area that I want to bend. With a bit of luck now, I can get this bend in place and it'll hold. Yeah, that's much better. That's holding down nicely and I can return it up here. So I get a bend there and a bend there. It's still struggling a little bit. I'm, I'm quite surprised. Very, very tough that. But just that bit of wavy movement, that's, that's enough. That's all I want to go for. I don't want all the movement to just mirror each other in the same way. So this one next to it, I'm going to take away and towards. So just to be, just to be a bit different. And this one here now, I think I'll just bring this down and then up like that. This was the thicker branch that I applied the double coil to that was connected to that one at the front. So I should be able to add some good movement to this one also. And all I want to do with this is to just move it across and into this gap, maybe down a little bit like that. And then take it in an upwards direction. So like I said, I don't want to go crazy with these branches. I just want to add a bit of subtle movement and, and that's enough. We've got this one. And again, this needs to come over and just fill this space, but I'll let it come up first before, before I turn it. So it's a bit different from this one. Again, some fairly subtle movement. That's beginning to look good. I've seen a problem though. I genuinely haven't touched this since I saw that problem. I just rotated the tree around and can you spot what the problem is? <laughs> this branch at the back mirrors this one almost perfectly. And so I'll move it now and you'll be able to see it. See it suddenly appear. I don't want these two looking exactly the same from the front. So that should clear things up to a certain extent. Yeah, that looks a lot better. I'm much happier with that. And these, these two mirror each other a little bit, which isn't ideal. So I will take this one up. And these are kind of the tweaks that you have to do as you're sort of looking at the overall design. And this one can just come round like that. And so now we've got some definite, definite differentiation between all those branches at the top. Let me look from behind the camera. Yeah, it's beginning to work. The only thing is these two, they still kind of look like they're coming from one, which isn't ideal. I want to bend this further down and it's quite a thin one. So I should be able to bring that down like that. Perfect. I'm very happy with that. That now stops it just lining up with this one at the back. Yeah, yeah, definitely better. The only thing really left to do now is deal with these three on this side and To follow the pattern of all the other branches, I want this one sort of pointing upwards, generally upwards. It can come towards the camera and then away, which is quite interesting. This one here, again, can come towards and up and perhaps down a little like that. And then what to do with this back one? Nothing too, nothing too crazy with this one. Just put, put a bit of form into it. Give it that general upwards movement. Nice. These two are kind of crossing a bit. And so by just taking that up there and bringing that there, it separates them. 
can't see this from, from the, when I'm looking from the front of the tree, it's completely invisible because it's coming vertically out backwards. And I would like it to be seen. It's just a question of where I take it. And I think by bringing it across and up and round like that, that's quite interesting. That works quite well. Although we can't really, we still can't see a lot of it. We can see that it does come out and gives depth to the composition. So there we go. I'm really pleased with how that's worked out. I think it looks quite good from all directions. I've not gone crazy on these bends, but they've all now got a bit of interesting movement. I think it looks quite natural. And you can imagine these branches thickening up, this top hopefully healing over, and a bonsai for the future. I'm now going to apply some cut paste to all the branches and on the top, just to heal everything in and stop any disease getting into the tree. And I'll just leave this in the garden now to grow until probably late spring, I'm thinking maybe early May. And then what I'll do is I'll do an air layer about here. Hopefully that'll root in, takes a couple of months. I can cut that off in autumn and this should be a tree looking pretty good this time next year. As always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.